Hey everyone, my name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gill Force Twins. Say hello, Amanda. What's up guys, Amanda here. Today we are at Pulley Ridge, which is 100 miles into the Gulf of Mexico off of Key West. We're fishing on the Yankee Caps. We've been fishing for days on end. It's four days, three nights. We always lose track of time when we're here. I couldn't tell you what day it is or what time it is. All I know is we're fishing and having fun. We wanted to take a minute and show you all how to slow pitch jig. Slow pitch jigging has become the new craze. Everybody's doing it, everybody loves it. It's pretty addicting in my opinion. However, it can be a little bit confusing because it's different, it's new, and there's some things that you definitely might need to know that you might not know that will help you to catch more fish. I also want to add that some people shy away from slow pitch jigging because it seems like such an expensive sport. The jigs themselves can be $30 a piece. It doesn't have to be expensive, so don't let that turn you off from the sport of slow pitch jigging. Let's start with the rod and reel. This rod was custom made. This is custom made by Rain Shadow. It has it says Team, Team Rain, Rain Shadow right there. And the Gale, Gale Force, Force logo. right up there. But you can see that, and you can go to tackle stores, guys, and buy pretty basic rods. I'll put all the details of the serial number and the really specifics of this rod in the description box. So if you're curious and trying to build one for yourself, hopefully this information will help you. But just look at this rod. Look how unique it looks. Can you see it in the whole frame, Amanda? Yes, it's very um, skinny, you could say. Super light, very light. We've got red camo on here, which is a nice touch. The reel is the accurate 500 turn narrow, and you can see it literally is narrow. Look at there this. There we go. Super tiny and skinny right there. And the reason why you make it narrow, or why people get narrow reels, for slow pitch digging is it's less work when you have to level wine. There's less width that you have to go with. Especially when you're focusing on jigging the whole time. Exactly, because you're focusing on a task and a technique so you don't have to worry about, now I have to level wine, now I have to do this. It simplifies things. Check out this drag. This is called star drag and you see it has five points making a star. And if I click it forwards, that tightens the drag. If I click it backwards, it loosens the drag. I personally really like the star drag, especially if there's a big fish on. It's really easy to adjust while you're fighting a fish. Now, you don't want to get too aggressive with adjusting your drag when you're fighting a fish. Usually you want to let the reel do its work, but I do like that it's kind of there and handy and super easy to manipulate it if you need to in the moment. This spool here has 40 pound white braid on it. You can do any color you want. We actually picked white because we're out in Pulley Ridge and we fish a lot at nighttime and white's just easy to see, but you could do black, red, green, whatever you want to choose. Also, we like white because it doesn't clash with our red and black Gale Force colors. Well, it actually matches our it red matches and black Gale Force colors. Yes. The first knot that we have on our braid is a bimini. You can see the bimini right here. Right you see there. that okay, Amanda? Yep, we can see it. And what that does is it double the, doubles the line. Let's put the line. See how the line is doubled? Just like that. And then we tie an Albright. An Albright. The reason we tie an Albright, why the Albright is a nice you could do a double uni, but the reason why the Albright is a nice knot for this is because it's such a small knot that it's very, it goes through the guys very easily. And look how small these guys are. Some of these guys get very, very small. tiny, especially the ones up top. So having that Albright or a small knot is very useful. And we simply have 50 pound fluoro for our leader, which we're going to tie our jig to. Now we're going to go from our 50 pound fluoro leader, I just tie a uni knot, to a ball bearing swivel. From your ball bearing swivel, there's a split ring right here. And on that split ring, if you look here, is a solid ring. That solid ring is where your assist hooks are going to be. And your again, your split ring goes to your jig. Today we're using a 300 gram jig because we're fishing, this is a 300 gram ruck jigs because we're fishing in almost 600 feet of water. If you're fishing in like 150 feet of water, 200 feet of water, you can use a 100 gram jig. On the back end of the jig, we go from our jig, again, to a split ring, to a solid ring with our hooks. On the back end, you don't need another ball bearing swivel that's just on the front end, and so it's ball bearing swivel, split ring, solid ring, assist hooks, jig, split ring, solid ring, assist hooks. I got the head cam on for you all, so you can see all the different angles. I've got a man holding the camera. Now, we're simply going to let this jig down. Put in free spool. And let's let it fall. Here it goes. 600 feet of water. It's gonna take a minute. Oh yeah. Down it goes. 
no, down it goes. Swimming like crazy on the way down. Go with All right, guys, we're gonna go off the reservation here a little what? bit. We just went it down. So oh, I'm on. Four mile ride. Uh, now I'm standing up on the pulpit, and the current's gonna take the jig that way. So as it goes, All I'm gonna right, walk. Guys, we're gonna go off the reservation here. Yes, you fish with something that's long and straight and shoots right down to the bottom. Something that kind of looks like a pencil if you have it. I'm on! Let's get one of them. I can't hear you. I think he spit it. We're on. She has a fish on? He spit it. He oh. spit it. Never mind. He's gone. He spit it. No, he's gone. We lost it. I was on it. He ate it on the way down. Okay. I'm sending my jig all the way to the bottom. And once it's on bottom, I'm gonna lock up the spool and I'm going to lift, let it drop, and do a half crank or even a quarter crank, just a little bit. We're gonna lift, drop, half or quarter crank. So she's lifting, dropping, then cranking. Small crank. Lifting, lifting dropping, dropping, then small cranking. cranking. I'm pretty scoped out right now because, like I said, we're in 600 feet of water. It wouldn't be this scoped out if we were in three or 250, 300. After a few lift drop cranks, you're gonna wanna find bottom again because you're slowly bringing your jig off the bottom. So it's gonna go lift, drop, half crank, lift, drop, half crank, lift, drop. Little cranks. I'm just gonna do this between three and maybe six times and then find bottom again. Right, and the key to slow pitch digging is making sure that you're close to the bottom at all times. So mm -hmm. that's why after a couple of cranks, stop, drop back to the bottom. As you guys can see, this rod is gonna give me a bruise in my armpit if I do this for hours on end. So option number two, you put rest your rod and you're gonna lift up and drop it. Lift up and drop it. Got that, Amanda? There you go. So that's another option that's you another can option. do. Kind of give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. If you I would definitely it. change it up. Make the jig act differently, depending on what the fish is in the mood for. Because just like we have moods, fish have moods. And one day they might be in the mood for something else. I hooked one. This took forever. Okay, so what are you doing while you're slow pitch jigging? I'm How not you lifting. Really I'm not lifting the rod at all. You're just pointing you, it down. You wind. You point your rod it down, down. Winding it down. I'm pointing and it down. And you wind. Don't pump. Don't high stick it. You'll break your rod. You will break the rod if you pick it up. This is a nice fish. We really hope we can see it. I had Captain Greg up there coaching me. Right down on the bottom, folks. Here's Captain Greg right down on the bottom. coaching Emily. Bottom, right? Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep going. You got it. <laughs> Beautiful. This is so hard. <laughs> you can do it. I know. So all we're doing is really. And this so is when you got my hands are literally sweating on the spool, like be on the handle. I'm not being Greg a girl. Says, Don't be a girl. <laughs> well, I am a girl. Try to keep up. How about that? <laughs> you got this. Keep going. And she was getting tired of digging her. I was getting tired, so she actually had the rod on the rail and was doing mm -hmm. that second technique. The that second happens. technique <laughs> to save her armpit, but now her armpit's gonna be pretty sore after this. I have a feeling. Mm -hmm. I know. The, the you got tired. You got worked. tired mechanism. It's what the fishies wanted. Told you they got personalities. Whoa, we just got a nice fish over here. Look at that. Maybe snowy that's grouper. Is, on. is that your second snowy grouper? Did you catch this second on the Good. jig? Yes. Slow pitch? Two in a row. Nice job. The slow pitch is working. Snowy grouper, second one for her on the slow pitch jig. Emily's reeling. She's got something on. It's time to start pumping the reel. Okay. I'll start time to lift the reel. Okay. All right, lift. Nice little pumps. Don't high stick it. If you start high sticking, you're gonna break it. So we can do little gentle pumps to help us gain a little bit more if you can't gain. Just like that, you can pump a little bit if you can't gain, but I have a friend that high stuck theirs and broke the whole thing. Broke the whole thing. So. Keep it under your arm. Little pumps to get it up. It's running. We're trying to get his belly to the belly of the fish to inflate. Mm -hmm. Get him past that that point of no return. Past the point of no return. It's the goal. I think I got about half a spool to go. Okay. Come on, come on. And he's pulling line again. <laughs> when your fish pulls. Don't reel Don't against, reel against him. him. Let him pull. Let him tire himself out. 
Here comes somebody's grouper over here. And point out how we're all on one side of the boat. Yes, and as you can see, everybody's fishing on one side of the boat. We're all fishing on the down current side of the boat, so our baits are going away from the boat. We're not going underneath the boat. That would be a major problem. <laughs> Takes some serious team effort to get this to work. Yeah, Greg think about, said everyone drop at, at the same time. Everyone dropped at the exact same time. If you look at all the lines that are out, I mean, I don't think anybody's gotten tangled yet. That's look, there's three people hooked up down impressive. there. There's three four hooked people up. hooked up down there. One, two, three, four people hooked up down there. Holy cow. Do we have four people hooked up down here? Yes. One, two, three. Is it the same fish or you got your own fish? Yeah, we got our own. Nice. Wow. Real, real, real. What do you think it is? Group. One, one fish. You think it's one fish? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see some color down here. There's one fish coming through. Oh, I don't know. We might have three people on one fish. You got it? Get the gaff job. Nice job, Tony. What a nice fish. You got your own fish though. You guys got your own fish. How much do you have left? Let's check back on him. Look at that spool. Spool? Sorry. Filling up. Can't really hold it still for the camera. The fish is pretty important. The fish is way more important. <laughs> Thanks guys. Emily's got to make a move because her fish is traveling down the boat. Keep reeling though. Is this good? Keep going. Okay Emily, what's going on now? Okay, my spool's almost full. Keep reeling. And I think that's my fish. Is that really your fish? Yes, yeah, my fish. Floating its no way. No one believes me. Uh, oh no, it's not. Idea. It's coming up. It's gonna oh, okay, pop okay. up. Watch. There, there. There, right you there it goes. You pulled the phone. Keep reeling. Oh, here it yeah, comes. I see right it. Dead below it. I see it. Here it comes. You pulled the phone. Here it comes. Very nice. Yours is not just to the left. Up. There it is. There it is. There it is. Keep reeling. Reel, reel, reel. He's here. Look at that. There it is. Holy cow. Yay. We'll get a free spool for me. Yep. Right in the right hole. Yep. Wow. Nice, My wrist is like jig, dead. Too. Nice <laughs> job, <laughs> like Emily. Holy cow. On the jig. Holy cow. This is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah why not? Pictures with it. Okay. Thanks. Get right ahead. All right. Got a really nice big snowy grouper. Okay. Nice job, Emily. Let's okay. get a picture. Nice job. So wait, what's the jig that we used? This, this is the jig. There it is. Here's the jig. 300 gram rock jigs. Do you see it? Yeah. It's a little nice job. Beautiful. Pencil jig. Let's take it to the fish box. You ready to take? Do you have a fish tag for me? Uh, Amanda? I will go get you a fish tag. Give me a fish tag. Fish tag. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. My fingers are sore, guys. That was the, first of all, that was the first snowy grouper that I caught on the slow pitch. And the, probably the biggest snowy grouper I've ever caught. That was super ever. cool. I hope you guys saw that really awesome way to fish slow pitch jigging. We slow pitched a few more times, but now we're switching gears and we are trolling for Wahoo. Check out this spread. It's Wahoo time. One troller there, one troller there. Full moon's not out, but it is a full moon. It is a full moon. It's kind of cloudy today, so we can't see it. But stay tuned. Make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and like and subscribe for more.